So welcome everyone. We are the International Research Collaborative of Established and Emergent Scholars, ERSEs, supporting historically marginalized and underserved learners group. Um, we co-designed and conducted a research study on educational technology usage in African universities. Uh, today we're talking about we're we talking about the mix, this mixed methods research that is in progress where we've been surveying educational technology users about their usage, innovative practices and existing support and practice changes amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, today we're going to focus on our global, uh, global scholarly collaboration within our community of practice and reflections that will be of interest to those involved in culturally situated collaborative research online. So let's introduce our colleagues. Hi everybody, I'm Alice Barlow Zambodla. I'm the Emerge Africa Research Support Convener and Network Development Consultant and I'm based in East London, South Africa. Hello, I'm Dr. Hannah Grossman. I'm an instructional designer through UCLA at the National Center for Child Traumatic Stress, and I'm in the United States. I'm Dr. Nicola Pallett, and I am based at Rhodes University in South Africa and part of the Emerge Africa team. And one of our mentors is also Dr. Juhong Christy Liu, who is from James Madison University in the USA. Hi, everyone. This is Leia Sikoyo. I'm a Senior Lecturer and Curriculum Specialist at Macquarie University in Uganda. Hi, this is Neil. I'm an EdTech Specialist from uh, Raj University in Macanda. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Nompilo Chuma and I'm a Lecturer and Researcher at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. This IRCES serving historically marginalized and underrepresented learners group have really evolved as a global scholarly collaboration in the past two years. Together, we have developed a research community of practice across culture, learning, and technology. We have also provided to each other an open, supportive, and a mutually respectful space for international research exchange and collaboration. Together, we explored uncharted water regarding research design methods and the research ethics in cross-cultural contexts. In the process, we developed appreciation of learning from each other and of the respective cultural and technological contexts through regular online meetings, even with time zone differences. And we embraced the differences in approaching communication, instruction, teaching, learning, and research solutions with diverse perspectives and technologies. What we've done. To make educational technology more accessible for different audiences, we need to examine not just what it can do for people, but also what enables and constrains that usage in different higher education settings. We decided to collaborate to collect, correlate, and analyze information about educational technology in Africa to strengthen our understandings of the systems that influence and enable its usage across the African continent. As a community of practice, we created a semi-structured interview and a survey to collect this information. Through iterative cycles of refinement and collective practice sessions with just-in-time guidance, we assured the quality of our materials and our interviewing skills. We then individually interviewed 15 educational technology experts at different universities in Africa and, are cur and currently have our survey out collecting information. We co-designed and refined our survey questions and we used Qualtrics and ShareScreen via Zoom. We took about one and a half months and participated in weekly online meetings. Not all members had access to these tools, but luckily Hannah used her accounts for this project. We discussed and refined details of the questions 
and we compared our survey to other surveys and discussed some of the differences. We shared with Emerge Africa Network convener Tony Carr for feedback given his experience with Africa-wide surveys on educational technology usage and then we refined the survey again. We then shared the final survey via social media um, with our, and then with our networks as well as the Emerge Africa Network. We also reframed our call for participation to improve our response rate. Uh, for the interview process, we began with a webinar about information interviews that was uh, run by an advisor to one of our colleagues, Hannah, and that's uh, uh, Dr. Betty, Betsy Brenma. And in, after that, we um, developed uh, our interviewing skills further by interviewing each other, and that helped us to refine the interview questions. And then we drew on my network to identify uh, interviewees to whom we distributed the interview schedules. And as we did that, we also reflected on the interview process and refined the survey questions based on what we are learning from the 15 interviews that we um, have been able to com conclude as of now. The next steps that we are looking forward to is deciding on the software for coding the interviews, and then we proceed with coding. As Leah has mentioned, we haven't analyzed our data yet, but we do have some preliminary findings regarding the process and the project. In terms of sharing, we've come to understand terms and processes, values, responsibilities, skills, and resources through networks. In terms of leveraging synergies, we've come to use what each person brings in order to move us forward. In terms of learning by doing, um, we have been practicing together in a safe space and we have also been co-creating practices as a learning community. We have also done a lot of collaborative reflection and feedback. In terms of the project, as the other speakers have mentioned, we've designed, developed, and tested our informational interview protocol and survey extensively. We've also conducted 15 informational interviews with researchers in South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, Botswana, and Gambia at African universities. We've also collected surveys from 31 educational technology users so far at African universities. As a group, we also have some, some guiding principles that we had to sit and reflect around. And the, the first group was a, a, a bunch of interpersonal uh, guiding principles. The first one is we are very much relationship focused. We, are, we have courageous conversations leading to relationships. Um, we start by talking and sharing our worlds and we support each other in, in our worlds. We also have a safe and, safe and supportive spaces. Um, we created a climate, climate where people feel comfortable and capable of contributing and celebrating each other's achievements. Um, we also have a collaborative space. We understand that we have differences. Um, but we do accept them and we honor those differences. Um, we also appreciate what people bring to the collaboration and we use a facilitated process instead of a hierarchical um, leading type of process. Um, and lastly, we also have a shared passion. We are all definitely individually motivated about the work, um, but we also appreciate each other's passions. Um, and with that, we've created a team spirit and we also recognize um, aspirational goals together. We also have come up with some guiding principles uh, based on our reflections that speak to the process. The process was not a particularly um, structured one. It did start out like that, but ended up uh, being collapsed into something that was more flexible, uh, taking into consideration the diversity of the group and therefore people's lives and the worlds that they were living and working in, a structure allowing uh, for growth um, the process has evolved. We've gone through various things that have resulted in us accepting and embracing growth 
and the change that comes with the process, trusting that the process will take us good places and leveraging the synergies um, that emerge as we journey together. In terms of application and being applied, we learn by doing so that we can practice and improve our individual skills by contributing to the group. We're also a very reflective group. We take time to share perspectives and use our diversity as an asset to combine multiple perspectives and using that reflection as an intuitive guide to support our process. And of course, when you bring intuition into something like this and reflection, it can be time consuming, but it's worth it. And then of course, we're a very diverse group in very different uh, contexts and situations. So we are very sensitive and aware of each other's contexts and work really hard at integrating uh, context into all that we do to create a shared understanding. We thought we would end by taking a second to collaboratively reflect about what we've learned from this process. For me, my biggest lesson was that collaborative work takes time and it's worth it to allow that time for the work to go in the richness and the depth that it can. Um, I learned about a trauma-informed approach, which was something new to me. And I found that it was really useful and important to use it as we worked together and co-created together collaboratively. I learned about cognitively scaffolding an interview so that you can help folks think through the process and that can help our interviews to be less extractive. So I really felt that my interview skills improved. Uh, for me, I found it very meaningful and less stressful working in this very organic and evolving uh, process of collaboration rather than a hierarchical and uh, overly structured uh, way of collaborating. Okay, for me, it's the lack of collaboration that we do. Um, you know, it improved my reflexivity um, and it, 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 it gave me a space to learn to incorporate others' perspectives in a safe space. For me, it was how we all brought very different values uh, to the research topic and very different passions in terms of the research topic, which helped to shape the way we created the research design. 